What it is, everybody. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for a death battle! Yes, it is time for... They have a new death battle up called Ultron vs. Sigma. Now, I know Sigma's from uh, Mega Man. I'm almost... I always, for some reason, even though they don't really look alike, I always get him confused with um, a Mr. Ro a, 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 is it Mr. Robotnik or Dr. Robotnik. For some reason, I don't know why. Maybe because I don't know. I saw him in, like cartoons, I but I know he's Mega Man. I know he was in that Marvel's Capcom game. Other than that, I don't really know about him. Ultron. I know about Ultron. I know all trying to super badass motherfucker that you don't want to fuck with. <laughs> but anyway, it's Ultron vs. Sigma. I'm going with Ultron mainly because I know Ultron better than Sigma. But I might change my mind depending on what they say. I probably still go with Ultron because I'm like, Ultron is, is it just a beast. Like in the comic books, he's a He's a fucking beast. Like, in the movie, not so much, but in, in the comic books, like, Ultron is a scary motherfucker. But anyway, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this, this started. Here we go. Humans fear what they don't understand, especially when it comes to the infinite. Hey, that's a uh, animatrix. That's what's on. Ultron, Marvel's mechanical mass murderer, and Sigma, <laughs> the general that's of true. genocide from Mega Man X. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's he started a Mega Man X. Armor and skills hmm. to find out who would win a death battle. I know that. Well, I guess I don't remember that. It's been so long since I played a Mega Man game. The creator of the revolutionary pin particles and designated scientist super and wife beater. Father of one of the greatest mass murderers in the universe. Guess which one he's most remembered for. Eager to push the boundaries of science, Hank the negative shit is always the one you most remember for. On its own, modeling it on his own brain patterns. Just one problem. At the time, Hank was pretty effed up, and just a few years from going. Was he an alcoholic? Maybe not the best time to base an AI off your mind, but still, Hank's project was a success. Ultron had been born. Your destruction. Hang on, Wiz. Damn, I'm not black. Not black kind of. Ultron. In the movies, sure, but it was Hank in the primary. Yeah, we're not talking about this. Comics. Well, he really knocked it out of the park. Ultron's super smart brain of all past Hank's ability to cope. Basically skipping over the innocent kid phase and straight to screw you, Dad. You'll never understand. Why is he like and Batman sitting in him. the rain? Screw you, Wiz. You'll never <laughs> understand. Because Ultron's consciousness was based off Hank's struggling bipolar one, he inherited his creator's issues and magnified them into absurdity. With a new thirst for power, coupled with a severe inferiority complex, Ultron escaped the lab, bent on destroying his father, the Avengers, and basically all organic life. And the first step was upgrading his trash can of a body into a sleek Different new body. adamantium one. The same kind of metal used for Wolverine's skeleton chrome job. But you may be wondering, how does he get to walk around if his entire that was vibranium. Body is of adamantium? <laughs> Even Thor has a hard time bending that stuff. And he can friggin' destroy planets. Ultron thought of that and created an answer. His molecular rearranger allows him to mold and shape his body any way he likes. He can manipulate his adamant himself to move around or transform into blades, spikes, and explosions apparently specifically he can expend his body through a blast of energy the molecular rearranger is also a handy repair tool on the off chance he is damaged 
He's also got a power siphon to absorb energy, jet boosters for flight, nanobot antibodies, and a fusion reactor powering the whole package. And if you're a death robot who's about to challenge all the Avengers to a fight all at once, which seemed like this was inspiration for Metallo. <laughs> I don't know who came first. He I'm sure it's probably Ultron came first. And he can manipulate ionic energy. An ion is an atom or molecule with an electric charge, and this charge is created when it loses or gains one or more electrons. Uh, enough nerd speak, Wiz. <laughs> it's just there because all robo people need to shoot awesome robo lasers, right? Absolutely. Ultron can fire beams of ionic energy from his eyes, mouth, and hands, and can even use it to create force fields. He also wields an encephalo ray, which allows him to read and control minds, erase memories, and even put you into a coma with a single hit. Ah, Damn. Syphilis ray, huh? That's gotta be hard to get rid of. Syphilis ray. Also, Ultron's artificial intelligence isn't bound to any one physical body. Should he be destroyed, he can transfer his consciousness into another machine to survive. And boy, does he have a lot of drones on hand just for that. Like the giant Ultron 7 or the Christmas themed Santa Tron. And who could forget what? Ultron 15? The alcoholic one. Part robot, all fun. While most of these drones are relatively fragile, I do not remember that. Shell, Ultron has a veritable army on his hands, all of which are extensions of his will that he commands simultaneously. He's conquered the whole world with these guys in two different oh, future power, timelines. Exactly. He's humiliated heavy hitters like Iron Man, Three Wonder Man, 48 and hours. Flown across the entire galaxy just for right. fun, and Highly take fish. hits from Mjolnir like they were nothing. He has no so smart. I mean, two timelines. He's supreme, right? And Ultron was designed to grow smarter than him, so that must make him scientist ultra supreme. With expertise. He even assimilated a techno-organic race known as the Phalanx, and then used them to conquer the entire Kree Empire. This empire spans the Greater Magellanic Cloud, a real-life satellite galaxy near to our own Milky Way. It's made up of a thousand planets across a diameter of 14,000 light years, and Ultron conquered all of them in just a couple hours. Damn, that's some dedication. How? I can't even bother to finish conquering all the anthills outside my shack. With all that power and intelligence, Ultron was able to defeat the time-traveling warlord Kang, who pulled an army of superheroes across time to fight for him. Kang lost so many times that the universe started to collapse from how many people he was time-hopping to fight Ultron. <laughs> Man, is there anything that can stop this robot? Well, sufficient heat can melt his internal circuitry, his adamantium is vulnerable to anti-metal, and he is frequently defeated by computer viruses that can attack his AI directly. Oh yeah, I figured he was a woman at some point. He, from Hank. he once self-destructed in utter disbelief after reading the phrase... Because he has long hair and yeah, a feminine so voice, heavy. he's a woman. The thought of not killing people <laughs> drove him to suicide. Yeah, guys get oh, wow. No kidding, he wants to turn Hank's wife into a robot bride for himself. <laughs> Look at this, and Frankenstein? Hank for a cross -galaxy road trip, slaughtering billions just for fun. Whoa, wait, what was that bit about sex botting his mom? There aren't enough pin particles in the world to shrink Ultron's issues, but to be honest, that's probably what makes him so incredibly deadly. Well, like the man said, it doesn't kill him. <laughs> I always thought that was weird. I was like, why did you destroy that robot? Just to In look intimidating right there. <clears throat> humanity experienced a golden age of technology, all thanks to the discovery and replication of a certain blue android that could think and feel like a human. These replicated androids, or reploids, were mass produced and used at all levels of society. Wow, that sounds amazing. Like it could have no possible negative repercussions at all. Unfortunately, oh, shit. there it is. Instances of crime involving reploids began to increase. Something seemed to be infecting them, turning these reploids into violent mavericks who needed to be stopped. So, Dr. Kane, the guy that started this reploid shindig in the first place, created a robot so badass that it could hunt mavericks without getting infected himself. This reploid was named... Kinda Sigma. sounds familiar. Commander Sigma led the newly formed Maverick Hunters like an elite police force. Under his leadership skills, the number of overall casualties dropped to a whopping zero. Things were going great. Well, until they found a mysterious red Maverick in an abandoned laboratory who started eating Maverick Hunter ass for breakfast. Oh, wait, no, that didn't come out right. Sigma <laughs> fought the fight of his life. 
And though he technically won, his victory was far more pyrrhic than he or the rest of the world could ever have imagined. So this red guy was called Zero. Zero. And turns out the thing infecting reploids and turning them into mavericks was a virus leaking from Zero's stasis pod. It also didn't sound right. A final gift from that dastardly Dr. Wily. Oh dear god, that thing is hard on a hangover. Fortunately, Sigma was designed to fight off such a virus. Unfortunately, this actually just made things worse. Instead of bending Sigma to its violent will, the virus merged with his programming, becoming one with his body and mind. Together, they both became stronger than before, with a whole new outlook on the world. Sigma began to look at humankind as detrimental to Reploid evolution, holding back their full potential. Yeah, yeah, the big, strong metal people hate the dumb flesh bags. Blah, blah. I hear it from you every time at the bar, Wiz. <laughs> I... When was the last time I went to a bar? You don't remember? Um, no. Mission accomplished. Sigma gathered an army of Mavericks, and when the time was right, his invasion began. But to pull it off, he needed some bitchin' robo-weapons. Sigma's favorite is his totally not copyrighted beam sword. But he also <laughs> likes tearing through bots with his flying hammer, beam scythe, and the I'm not compensating for anything size Sigma blade. He also wields an energy rifle, flamethrower, and a giant no, he's a robot, for man. extra defense. He has a shield that can be well, that he cares about having a penis. And hey, look, he's like a robo wolf. Oh brain. my god. The metal's on the outside. Well, and inside. Yeah, With all like... <laughs> these weapons and an army at his back, Sigma's operation was nearly successful. However, he was halted by the original android Dr. Kane found all those years ago. Mega, Mega Man. Man X. Mega Man X. But Sigma just kept coming back. Over and over and over and wait a minute. Is that a new villain? Oh, never mind. He's just being controlled by Sigma. How the hell does he keep coming back? How many lives does this guy have? <laughs> well, Sigma's body is just a shell. The true essence of Sigma lies in the merged and sentient Sigma virus. This virus can infect other robotic bodies, turning other Reploids maverick or even completely transferring his consciousness. He's even built several enormous bodies just for this. These extra robo shells have all sorts of unique abilities. They can fly, teleport around, make walls of electricity, create force fields, shoot a giant yeah, laser beam Wolverine. Pass, or make <laughs> even robo. doing this, like come oh, on. that's rough, buddy. I've been there. Also, each of Sigma's Mavericks possess their own abilities that are. Hey, hey, look, Wiz, they're all animals. That one's a penguin, and that's an octopus, and that one's a Kowanger. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is, Kowanger. So. It's just a messed up romanization of Kuwagata, the Japanese word for stag beam. Yeah, I guess Kuwanger sounds more badass. With these forces, Sigma waged war with humanity for many, many years. He's battled top tier Maverick hunters like X, Axel, and even that Zero guy. Wait, hey, what's Guns N' Roses doing here? Zero once survived an impact that broke apart the Eurasia space colony, which, when its pieces landed on Earth, created an explosion equal to at least 100 teratons of TNT. And Sigma is powerful enough to take out Zero in a single hit. Damn! But Sigma's also managed to damage X, who once channeled enough energy through his body to destroy all of Japan. Suck it, Godzilla! And many of Sigma's bodies could tank attacks from both X and Zero without much issue. That's impressive, considering X fought the General, whose body was tough enough to Ooh, block a laser. Kind of looks like M. Bison. Earth. <laughs> the minimum amount of energy necessary to destroy a planet is known as its gravitational binding energy, which, in the case of Earth, is equivalent to a little over 63 sextillion tons of TNT. That's 22 zeros. The, the number, not the robot. Plus, he's fast enough to keep up with zero. The actual robot, not the number, who dodged Optic Sunflower's beam of sunlight. Actually, Sigma's likely even faster. Recall that Reploids like X, Zero, and Sigma were designed to be superior in every way to classic era robots like Mega Man. That same Mega Man fought Duo, a space robot capable of flying between Saturn and the Earth within 35 seconds. The only thing that could stop Sigma was the Mother Elf antivirus program. But if you don't take out the squishy computery center, he'll always come back. So long as Sigma's still kicking, the dream of a world where humans and robots coexist is doomed to be a nightmare. The time has come to prove your mettle against me. This fight will decide the fate of all Reploids. The, the villain always has them cape. A cape and a collar like pop. Alright, the combatants are set. Let's send this debate once and for all. But first, let us help you program your next meal. Oh, 
Yeah, I was like, gotta be Ultron coming in. <laughs> Damn, he looked cool. I'll accept your unconditional surrender now. At the risk of sounding cliche. You and what army? <laughs> You had to ask. <laughs> what the hell is that song? Oh, they would they? S oh. The optic blast. Fucking Dragon Ball Z over here. Go, go, power reaches. <laughs> That's what I feel like. Yeah, this is Power Rangers, Daddy Giant Mechs, basically fighting each other. He took his... <laughs> he took Codus' his hands. And the world blew up. Yeah, it's like Ultron is just a, a virus himself, basically. That motherfucker said, bitch, please. He said, you are my bitch. <laughs> Yo, they turned quick, didn't they? The mother robots. <laughs> Despite Sigma's deviousness and ferocity, he was fairly outclassed by Ultron's talents. Sigma could scale to the general who took a base full of 63 sextillion tons of TNT. But Ultron can withstand hits from Thor and his hammer, and we all know how awesome that thing is. When Thor fought Gore the God Butcher, their battle created shockwaves powerful enough to shatter planets thousands of miles away. This could only be possible with a force equivalent to 682 septillion tons of TNT. Planets that were just thousands of miles away? Stronger than anything Sigma Shouldn't there be survive. millions? And not miles. only is Ultron frequently smacked Thor around like a toddler, Thor has had a really hard time trying to damage Ultron's adamantium armor. So Sigma's weapons couldn't either. In terms of speed, Ultron yeah, flew across the galaxy in several months, putting him roughly 200,000 times the speed of light. That's leagues faster than Sigma. Even if we scale him to Duo, who is 114 times light speed. And frankly, scaling to Duo through Mega Man in the first place is a bit capricious, as Duo didn't use his full potential in their fight. Even with all that, Why? it really didn't matter who could punch harder or move faster, because the real fight was between the Ultron AI and the Sigma virus. Right, and while infection and possession was kind of the Sigma virus's thing, Ultron's AI was far more advanced. Recall how he enslaved an entire techno-organic race to the point where he used them to conquer an empire spanning a whole satellite galaxy. Yeah, the Phalanx are like Marvel's version of the Borg. Hell, that means Ultron basically sigma a whole race of Sigmas. 
It also helps that Ultron is as smart or smarter than Hank, the scientist supreme. Hank's even admitted as much, and he's smart enough to construct an infinitely sized. Ah, but is he smarter than Reed Richards? Sigma was certainly a ruthless schemer. <laughs> oh, people always do that, but is he smarter than this person? <laughs> was one specifically designed to bypass his defenses and leave him vulnerable to attack from the future and a bunch of other complicated stuff. Sigma was a tenacious one, but Ultron was the stronger android, the tougher villain, and the deadlier virus. It wasn't long before Ultron assimilated him. The winner is Ultron. Wow. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want the battle hey, thanks for making it. Click the link down below and get it off iTunes. And we still have a few Are you guys on iTunes now? Left, so if you guys want to pick one up, just click that box right over there. I don't use iTunes anymore though. Master Roshi and Jiraiya. Okay. You two on the 28th. Master Roshi and Jiraiya, that's interesting. Um two old perverts. <laughs> but uh that was a good fight. Like I guess I mean, I knew Ultron was going to that. Come on. My only reason I, I the only reason I said Ultron was going because I didn't know that much about Sigma. But from what they, from what they said about you know comparing their abilities and everything, it makes sense that Ultron. Went, I'm sure people are gonna be like, well, Sigma this Sigma. I mean, Ultron is probably the more popular one anyway. So is and all this. All this shit basically just a big popularity contest. People, I mean, on paper, somebody could dominate somebody else. And they just, people steal because this person will pop. Like, I've seen so many arguments about on Instagram about um, Spider Man and Superman over the years. And I'm like, really? And you would think, but then people are like, what if Spider Man had kryptonite and he knew how to use it and then he was able to have time to. You know, splice it with his spider shooters, web shooters, and then he had kryptonite webbing. And I'm like, also, oh, Spider Man gets all this prep time and all this shit, and all this, and the weaknesses for Superman and knows how to use and all this. But Superman just has to just come there fresh because he's the more powerful, but he don't get any prep time. Now that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> how about they both get prep time? <laughs> Superman shows up in one of those, uh, like, uh, lead suits. So the kryptonite won't affect him. But like, I don't even think it would matter. But still, because he went so fast, like, it wouldn't matter. But <laughs> like, it's just funny. I know people... I, I'm not even, I don't even read the comments for these videos anymore. For, um, like, in these battle videos. Because people always... You know, even, like, Bad in the Sun. We know those fights are... Uh, they know those fights are based on votes. The, the, the victory. Whoever wins the fight is based on how many people voted for that person. So it's a pop that is definitely a popularity contest. And people still be in the comments of this person shouldn't have won, this person should have did this, and this person should have did that. Like, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> like yes, this person most likely would have won it on paper if you look at their abilities and their feats and stuff like that. Yes, this person should have won. But it's not based on that. And and it, it gets even deeper with this because now now there's people actually analyzing feats, abilities, and stuff like that, and they're saying no, this person, based on their feats, outmatches this person. And if the fight is not close, they say, well, I mean, the fight anybody could win. I mean, you could say, well, this person win. You say, Ultron wins this fight you know, six times out of ten. So they said, well, Ultron won this fight to them. But that doesn't mean Sigma loses every time. Like I said, Ultron wants six out of ten. Sigma wants four. Wins four out of ten. So that means Sigma is not like it's not like Ultron beats him ten out of ten times. It's impossible for this person to beat this person. But I mean, there's always a possibility. But then to say, is it fair? Did you? Did he win fairly? Like they both just going head to head with all the no prep time just kind of just going at it which is the way you know they do their thing where there's no prep time it's just random encounters to keep it pure you know but anyway that was a good fight 
I like that one. I like the, <laughs> I like the, like, almost like a, you know, like the video game we be on the side and shit, like the old video games. I like that. Really good. That was, that was really good. They, they did a good job, like they pretty much always do. And what did y'all think about it? Do y'all think Ultron should have won? Do you think Sigma should have won? Do you think both of them should have killed each other? Do you think they would have just combined, like, in Marvel versus Capcom? And just, and, uh, taking over the universe? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what do y'all think? You know, like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to put the link for the original video in the description so y'all can watch it yourself. Y'all haven't. I think this came out yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, I think like yesterday sometime. But, um, link going to be in the description and watch the video yourself. And uh, I'll see y'all later. Peace.